Let's do it! Here's what we'll need. A large 2 kg napa cabbage, one apple, a carrot, an onion, and green onions. First up, let's tackle the cabbage. Here's a little trick. Start by cutting from the bottom, but don't slice all the way to the top. Instead, gently pull it apart with your hands. This technique helps keep the leaves large and intact, minimizing any small, broken pieces. Perfect for our kimchi. You might wonder, why make kimchi at home when I can just buy it from the store? Well, let me tell you. The difference between homemade and store-bought kimchi is like night and day. Homemade kimchi is incredibly fresh and flavorful. Ever since my husband tasted the kimchi I make at home, he's never gone back to the supermarket kind. Once you try it, you'll understand why. While waiting, let's prepare our kimchi paste. First, add one and a half cups of water. Now, stir in a quarter cup of glutinous rice flour along with two tablespoons of sugar and turn on the stove. Keep stirring slowly as the heat works its magic. Watch as the mixture transforms into a semi-transparent, gel-like consistency. This rice paste will be the thickening base that binds all the spicy and flavorful ingredients of our kimchi paste together. Now, let's make the spice blend for our kimchi. Grab your food processor. It's about to get flavorful in here. Chop half an onion and half an apple and add these to the processor along with five cloves of garlic. To bring in that umami richness, pour in a quarter cup of fish sauce. Secure the lid and turn on the processor. Let it spin until everything is blended into a smooth paste. Next, we'll prep the rest of our veggies. Let's start with the carrot. Slice it into fine juliana strips, capturing that vibrant color and crunch. Next, take the remaining half of the apple and slice it, but not too thinly, to add a natural sweetness to our kimchi. Lastly, Chop the green onions into long, thin strips. Now, let's not forget about our star ingredient, the cabbage. It's time to turn it over. This step is crucial for ensuring that the leaves dehydrate evenly. I'll be repeating this process three times, with a half hour interval between each turn. This careful attention helps every leaf shed its water uniformly. Setting the stage, for perfectly fermented kimchi. Check on our cabbage again. Remember, we turn it every 30 minutes and we do this three times in total. 
Look at all the water that has been drawn out. Our basin is nearly half full. Now it's time for the bend test. Gently bend a leaf with your fingers if it's no longer crisp, but can flex softly without breaking. That's a clear sign our dehydration process is complete. This flexibility means our cabbage is perfectly prepped and ready for the next big step. Now it's time to wash the cabbage. Thoroughly rinse each layer to remove any excess salt. But here's the crucial part. Use your hands to firmly squeeze out the water. This step is vital because we want our cabbage as dry as possible to ensure it fully absorbs all the flavors of our kimchi paste. Once this is done, we're all set for the final and most exciting step, mixing it with our kimchi paste. Let's make sure our cabbage is ready to soak up all those delicious spices and seasonings. There you have it. Your freshly made kimchi can be enjoyed right away. Crisp and vibrant with flavor. If you prefer a deeper, more developed taste, simply transfer your kimchi into a sealed container and store it in the refrigerator. Give it some time to ferment. 